Good day students. This video is going to show you how to identify the different types of slopes, a cliff, a waterfall, as well as a valley and a spur. Now there are three things that's really important when you try to identify a slope or a landform. Those are the spacing of the contours, the patterns of the contours, and the direction of height increase. Now let's look at this first example. So the spacing, if you look, you can see two contours are spaced close together, a gap, two close together, a gap. So if you can see, it forms a very distinctive pattern. Two close, a gap, two close, a gap. The height, you can see it starts here at 100, and that's the direction of height increase. Now if I should draw a cross section of this, steep increase, then a gentle slope. Steep increase, then a more gentle slope. Steep increase and a more gentle slope. And if you look at this cross section here, you can see it's a terraced slope. So what are the typical features of a terraced slope? You've got two and sometimes even more contours spaced close together. Then there's a bigger spacing between the contours. Then another grouping of contours, a bigger space. And that's how a terraced slope looks like. Now, if you look at these two examples, they are both an example of a uniform slope. So it doesn't matter whether the contours are spaced very close together or a bit further apart. But if you look carefully, you can see the spacing between the contours are more or less exactly the same. Both of them start here is the where it starts at 100 and it goes up to 240. This one starts at 100 and goes up to 340. So a uniform slope, if I should draw a cross section, this will be a more gentle slope and this will be a steeper slope. But they are both uniform slopes. In an exercise, gentle and steep slopes are too easy. So if you have a contour pattern that is uniformly spaced. The answer won't be in this case gentle or in this case steep. It's first a uniform slope and then a gentle slope, a uniform slope and then a steep slope. So the contour pattern for a uniform slope, you can see the spacing between the contours are more or less exactly the same. Now, if you go to these two, they usually are a big problem for a lot of students, and they are convex and concave. Now, let's look at the spacing. You will see they look exactly the same in this example. Some part of the slope of steep, and you can see some part of the slope is gentle. So, they've got a spacing from... Some contours are spaced quite far apart, and some contours are spaced quite close together. It forms a distinctive pattern, but the thing is, between concave and convex, the direction of height increase is really, really important. So I'm going to add the height. This one starts at 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 200, 220. 240, 260, 280, and this one will be 300. This one will start at 100, 20, 40, 60, 180, and it will end at 300. So they both look exactly the same, but you will see the difference between concave and convex is the direction of height increase. In this example, A, you will see the lower reaches is very steep. And in this case, you can see where it starts, the lower reaches are gentle. Now, you must probably have got your own methods how to determine between what is a convex and a concave slope. What I usually do is I use my hands. So look at what I do. So if you look at example A, so it starts and it's very steep. 
and then it levels off. So it starts, it's very steep, and then it levels off. This shape here, so very steep and levels off, this is convex. This other one starts gentle and then increase. Starts gentle and then become very steep. So start gentle, becomes very steep, and this is concave. So both of them got one part that's very steep and one part that is gentle. The difference is at convex, the lower reaches are very steep and concave, the lower reaches are very gentle. So convex, very steep and then levels off. Concave, gentle and then starts increasing. If you want to determine between concave and convex and both the value and spur, always start with the lower value. So where the lower height is, that will also assist you greatly. So the next example is a cliff and a waterfall. So you can see there's a contour pattern and you can see two contours touching here and two contours touching here. They both look the same. The only difference between a cliff and a waterfall is the presence of a river. So if there's no river there, that will be a cliff. The moment there's a river, it becomes a waterfall. So a cliff is where two or more contours touch each other and there's no river or stream present. A waterfall is where two or more contours touch each other, but there's a river and that becomes a waterfall. Now, another uh, landform that usually is a big headache for students is a valley in the spur. So if you look at this contour pattern, some of it are valleys and some are spurs. Now, students battle with this. So my first tip is start at the lower levels. So if you can see, this is one landfall and that's another landfall. So this is one landfall, that's another landfall, that's another landfall, and that's another landfall. So again, start at the lower reaches. Now if you look, you can see this is 140. So this will be 120. You can see that's the direction of height increase and that's the direction of height increase. Again, start at the lowest. So this, can you see, is narrow. And as there's a height increase, it broadens up. What shape is this? This is V. And V stands for valley. So where it's very narrow and the low, and then as you go higher, it broadens up, you can see this is a valley. Yes, you can say a valley is also where the contour bends and points in a direction of height increase. If that method works for you, but a very easy method is where you start at the lowest and you go and you follow it and the higher you go, it broadens up. This one, you start at the lowest. You can see this is the lowest area. And as you go higher, it goes narrows and a shape like that will be a spur because it's like a piece of mountain sticking up so usually we'll get a river cutting into backwards headwards erosion going in like that so a spur there's the lowest part and as you go higher it narrows and that is a shape of a hill almost but usually a spur is a piece of a mountain sticking out and that's how you determine the difference between valley and spur, because their contour patterns look exactly the same. The spacing is also so the same. The big difference is where is the height increase. So if the narrowest part is the lowest part and you go out, that will be a valley. If the broadest part is the lowest part and as you go higher, it narrows down, that would be a spur.